everybody, and welcome back to Josh Leoch's video blog. We're back for part two of our series talking about the pitfalls that buyers have to worry about when waiving contingencies. And today we're talking about waiving the appraisal and what that means. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. All right, everybody, welcome back. Part two of our series in regards to waiving contingencies. Again, we have the awesome, the amazing attorney Ariel Sakala from Crowley and Cummings here to uh, help educate you as a buyer and consumer in regards to waiving these contingencies and what it means to you in the process. So last video, we talked about waiving the home inspection. Today, we're talking about waiving the appraisal. It's a big thing to waive. So I'd like to welcome attorney Sakala here. She's going to get into what it means and what it stands and what your rights are, and what you're waiving when you say, hey, waiving that appraisal. So welcome, Ariel. Thank you for being here. It's always a pleasure, Josh. And again, I think this is a really important topic. Uh, as you noted, people are doing a lot to get their offers accepted and they're trying to put their strongest foot forward financially and otherwise. And we're seeing a lot of people waiving the appraisal contingency. And um, I think it's very important before you do something like this to make sure that you have consulted with your lender so that you know exactly what um, financial situation that you're in and how much bandwidth you have to do something like that. Uh, it's also important that if you're waiving contingencies and you don't feel comfortable, um, under if you don't feel like you understand the legal language, you should consult with your attorney and also with your agent on it. So when we say that in an offer, you might say that the buyer is waiving the appraisal contingency. And that means that um, especially in a case where the buyer may have been uh, offering much more than the property was listed for, that the buyer is going to move forward with the purchase regardless of what the bank's appraised value of the property is. So when the when the listing agent puts the property on the market, they're using their that number is typically based on the comparative market analysis of the other properties nearby in the market that are supporting the value of that home, that price. So it's not an arbitrary number. So when the buyer decides to bid above that number, there's a very good chance that when the actual bank appraisal is done, it mirrors what the comparative market analysis that's done by the listing agent. So the appraiser is gonna go and do that same analysis and they may find that the actual list price is really the true value of the property. And when the lender goes to finance that property, they're only going to be able to lend on the higher of the um, the appraised value or the purchase price. I'm sorry, the lower of the appraised value or the of the purchase price. So if you've got a purchase price of five hundred and fifty thousand dollars and the appraisal comes in at five hundred thousand dollars, the lender is going to be lending on that five hundred thousand dollars. So that means that 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 difference of the fifty thousand dollars needs to be absorbed somewhere. And that's typically by the buyer bringing those additional funds to closing. Um, so the analysis is when you are um, deciding how much over that you want to bid over the list price um, is how much money can you can you come out of pocket for? So somebody who's waiving the appraisal contingency altogether, you're running the risk that the listing agent put it on at five hundred thousand. You're bidding five fifty. You've got to come up with that extra fifty thousand dollars. Now, if you don't have fifty thousand dollars, you may not want to put a blanket appraisal waiver. You may want to say, "Hey, I only have twenty thousand dollars extra to spend." So you may say you may put a limit that says that you will pay as the buyer twenty thousand dollars over the appraised value. So that gives you a little bit of protection that you're not going to be on the hook for the full um, difference between the appraised property and the purchase price. So in that example, uh, if the buyer puts that language, you know, that, that gap coverage, we call it right in there saying, hey, we're waiving the appraisal or we're putting in this offer and we have uh, not waiving the appraisal, we're putting in this gap coverage of $20,000, $25,000, I'll use that number. And they offered five fifty, dollars and the appraisal comes in at $500. What that language states, just want to make sure I'm, I'm saying it correctly, is that they'll pay $25,000 over the appraised value. So their purchase price would go to $550 to $525. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So I just want to make sure that I was kind of putting that example out there. 
That's correct. And it's important that when you're when you're cultivating this language, you really want to be working again in connection with your agent, your attorney, and your lender to, to really feel comfortable with what that number is and what the the meaning of, of the language actually is. And if you're on the seller side, you really want to understand as well what the implications of the buyer's language is. Um, because it can be um, the way that these appraisal uh, gap uh, clauses are worded can be very significant and can create an unintended consequence if it's not done right. Correct. Uh, one of the things I advise um, the agents on my team is to ensure that if we're doing something like this, because again, we know that this is a crazy market. Some of these contingencies do have to be waived in order to obtain the property. And it comes down to ensuring that the language is correct, ensuring that they speak with their lender and their attorney so that they understand these things, right? It, it, just in general, and also understand um, the, the potential pitfalls, but more importantly, what their risk tolerance is, right? They, they have to have exactly. a level of risk tolerance in these types of situations. And I'm sure this market won't last forever, but right now it's really, really important. So um, one of the things I want you to just kind of talk about real quick too is, if somebody puts in that they're waiving their appraisal and they're rolling the dice that the appraisal is going to be within whatever amount of money they have, they have $50,000 to throw at this thing. And let's say that the property comes in $80,000 under and they don't have the money to do it. What's the potential pitfall or problem that they could face if they have that kind of dice roll and it goes against them? That's a great question, Josh. And it's a really integral point to this conversation, which is that if they're making that explicit statement that they're waiving the appraisal and you've got a really big gap like that it means that they're not going to be protected by the language in their mortgage contingency clause that would otherwise protect them if the value of the property was so dramatically different from the purchase price and they didn't have the funds then the lender is going to issue a denial and say you know you don't qualify for this mortgage because the property isn't worth enough um, you're removing that protection from your mortgage contingency clause by waiving the appraisal, which means that if you find yourself in that situation, you're not able to say, we're backing out of this deal under our mortgage contingency clause and protecting our deposit that way. So ultimately what it means is if push comes to shove and you don't have that $80,000 to put down and you can't consummate the transaction, you will ultimately default on the purchase and the seller is going to be entitled to keep the deposit that you put down, which is typically 5%. So, I mean, I think this speaks to how important these types of things are when um, we're making these decisions. And um, more importantly, the consumer or the buyer has to feel very confident with their, their team, right? They have to make sure that they have an agent who understands the ins and outs of this business. They understand uh, this type of market have, have had the education experience to advise them. Their attorney, they need to feel real comfortable with their real estate attorney and ensuring that they're speaking with them and having these conversations. And the lender needs to be uh, advising them of, of their financial kind of comfort range. And together they need to make a really, really good decision because again, these types of waivers, if done incorrectly, and certainly at a level of uh, tolerance that they're not ready for or have the ability to deal with, can cause some serious ramifications like losing your deposit. Um, and that could be traumatic for people and so impactful. So um, I'm glad we're doing this video. I'm glad we're bringing this, bringing this education out there because it's extremely important for, for buyers to understand what they're doing in this marketplace. Absolutely. I think it's really easy for buyers to get caught up in the frenzy too and you know want to swing for the fences and sometimes when you get caught up in the emotion of it you over promise when you can't <laughs> deliver so um like you said having that really experienced team around them will help bring them down to earth and make sure that the choices that they're making are educated and um, going to be for their ultimate benefit so i think bottom line is if you're going to have to be uh, putting this type of a waiver in place. It's really best to have that gap coverage language in there versus a, a complete waiver, uh, an area that you're comfortable with and can kind of deal with emotionally and financially uh, and ensuring that you're talking to your team and make sure you're doing the right thing for yourself and your family. So um, as always, thank you so much for being here, Ariel. You are a wealth of knowledge. Truly a pleasure, Josh. Thank you for having me. And most importantly, if you are watching this video and you're a buyer 
and you're uh, going down this road, do not hesitate to reach out to myself. Uh, I can certainly put you in touch with um, attorney Sakala, whose information is at the beginning in front of this video. Uh, and we work very closely with each other and we can, we can contact each other and get you into a conversation if you have more questions about this. So do not hesitate to reach out to us. So thank you again for watching our videos. We'll be back next week with another one of our series and have a great day and a great week.